Now, the era of cheap food could be over. Some experts believe we'll have to get used to eating locally produced food far more often. Ministers are warning that climate change and population growth could lead to us paying more for our food. They're asking consumers, farmers and supermarkets for their thoughts on how to secure Britain's food supplies over the next 20 years. Our environment correspondent, Sarah Mukherjee, is in Norwich for us now. Sarah. Very good afternoon to you. Well, there was a point just a few years ago where senior civil servants questioned the need for British agriculture at all. Why don't we simply import everything, they asked. Not anymore. The consensus, as you rightly say, is that we are going to struggle to feed ourselves in the decades to come, which is why GM experiments, like here at the John Innes Research Centre with these tomatoes, are now back on the menu. And as we've been finding out, scientists across the country are now looking at these issues. This could be the future of agriculture. Scientists at the research station here at East Morling in Kent are using techniques they hope will mean thirsty crops like strawberries and potatoes could need up to 75% less water. And with scientists predicting reduced rainfall, this research could be vital. We'll need that kind of understanding of how we can grow food, grow it successfully with perhaps less water, less use of fertilizer. Because we saw last year when the oil price went up and there was a drought in Australia which had an impact on the price of bread here in the UK, just how interdependent all of these things are. For certain rationed goods, an assistant still has to be at hand. First, to mark the ration book, and then, as in this case, to cut the bacon. The last time we were really worried about food security was in the Second World War, when we had to rely a lot more on homegrown produce. Wartime kitchens like this would have produced food rich in fruit and vegetables, but with not that much meat or fish. And in many ways this could be the diet we have to go back to in the future, but for different reasons. The rising cost of living means many more people are growing their own. Fish could become ever less sustainable, according to the experts, but climate change could bring us British olives or even British apricots. We're going to have to get used to less choice. We're going to have to eat differently for climate change, for water, all sort, for energy, for all sorts of reasons. Our diet is going to change, and consumers probably aren't going to like it, although it'll probably be healthier and definitely more sustainable. Whether it's grow your own or a high-tech fix, it seems we're reaching the end of the era of taking your food for granted. So, whether it's the high-tech solution or dig for victory, it looks like we're going to be eating very differently in the future. Now, there could be benefits to all of this. These GM tomatoes, the purple ones here, have cancer-fighting properties. But whatever happens, it looks like our supermarket shelves are going to look very different and perhaps emptier in the decades to come. Emily. Sarah Mukherjee, thanks very much indeed. Well, central to the government's long-term food strategy are the views of the National Farmers Union. Their head of government affairs is Terry Jones, and he's at Westminster. For us, Terry Jones, thanks for your time this afternoon. Do you think we could uh, really rely on UK farmers for all our produce eventually? Well, we're only about 63% self-sufficient currently in the UK. But I think what's important is that UK farmers, producing 1.5% already of the global food supply, can and can continue to play a full part in global food security. Uh, but what we'll need is the right framework within which to produce that food. We need, on the back of this vision, some very practical measures which are going to help a very practical group of people to step up to the plate and produce uh, food for the UK, Europe and beyond. So you're hinting there, what would you actually like to see the government commit to? Well, we need to see uh, farmers given the confidence to invest through tax breaks and agricultural buildings, through better research and development budgets. We've seen R&D budgets reduce by 45% in real terms. Uh, and to, to really get that massive increase in yield and tackle the problems of sustainability and finite resource use, what? we're, we're going to need to see a, a lot of money invested, up to £100 million, uh, in agricultural research and development in the future. What about uh, GM food? Is this a problem uh, that GM uh, crops could help to solve and would you like to see uh, more support from the government on that one? Well the figures are clear. We need to produce as much food again, so we're doubling of food supply by 2050 to feed 9 billion people. Uh, so clearly we need yields to increase. That said, there's a whole raft of uh, things that we can use. There are many tools in the toolbox uh, and GM will be just one of them. Uh, that we'll need to deploy if we're going to tackle those twin challenges because of course 
GM could confer benefits on reduced nutrient use, uh, drought tolerance, as well as just contributing to increased yields. And it, it could have applications here. And importantly, it could have applications in the developing world uh, where they struggle with uh, the really acute effects of, uh, acute effects of climate change. Terry Jones, thanks very much.